Well, hello, let's have some fun. It is time for this year's Hershey Nuggets with Almonds treats using our new ink colors, our new ephemera, and an old scan and cut. Why am I using an old scan and cut? <clears throat> well, it's not that old. It's just that I like this one better and my mats are stickier and we're gonna use the CM350. But by all means, follow along with whichever scan and cut you have. <clears throat> Boy, I'm losing my voice here. I'm gonna put the paper this new designer series paper up in the right corner. And I wanna get started with you, showing you the settings, and then we'll get into the decorating. I'm gonna teach you everything in this Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial on how to use your CM350 to create this project. So let me just start out by showing you this project. These are, did I think my plug might've just come out? All right, let's see, did my plug just come out? Let's try to turn it back on, there we go. So what we want to do is we want to make one wrapper and five, I mean, one topper and one, maybe a tray, right? So we're going to make the tray. I'm just using the designer series paper for the tray. And we're going to make a wrap, uh, the wrappers, the tray, you know, the tray topper. Okay, so that's, that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to go in here to your scan and cut. Now, it doesn't matter which scan and cut you have. They all have built-in patterns. So let's just start with that. I'm using... CM350 or Scan and Cut 2. So you might have buttons in different places, but that's okay. You all have the button. When you turn it on, you see Pattern and Scan. You all see that. It doesn't matter what model you have. So go to Pattern, and we're going to use the built-in shapes, and we're going to use this, this icon here, which is the built-in shapes. Now you can either use a rectangle down here, but we're just going to start. I just say let's use the square because then I can teach you another skill. When you use a square, though, if you to change the width, right, the height also changes in proportion or vice versa. So when you, you do use a square, make sure you push this button so that you can change the height and the width proportionally. So the height of this little topper needs to be five inches. And it's same if you're making a tray, except for a tray can be a little slightly smaller. And the width needs to be two and a quarter inches. Now, can you score with this machine? Yes and no, not in a good way. We're gonna score the little tray later. And what I mean by scoring is we're gonna make the score lines with our scoring tool, not with the scan and cut at this moment. Although there are times when I teach you about perforations and scoring. So that's it, we're gonna set that on the mat. Okay, so once again, in case my artificial intelligence is captioning this video, I just wanna say that I'm using the built-in pattern called BA-A001, the height is 5 inches, the width is 2.25. And go ahead and set that on the mat. So you might be wondering why I'm only doing one when there's all this room on the mat. And you can make four groups, but first let's make one group. So now we're going to go ahead and add another shape. And we're just going to or just go up here to add another shape and we just get a shape. Same thing. And this time we're going to make a wrapper. So you can either add a shape there and then edit it using this button here, or you can edit it the way we did earlier and just edit it as we go. So this one, this little wrapper is going to be three inches, three and a quarter inches high. Again, this is the width, three and a quarter inches high. I like the audible sounds on my machine, you know, by one inch wide. And I hope you have Hershey Nuggets where you live. I see a lot of you joining in from Australia. It's morning time over there already Saturday morning, you guys are a day ahead of us, but we in the U.S. love our Hershey Nuggets. Oops, why? I'm trying to do an inch, and here I am talking, and I'm going way below an inch. I'm like, that doesn't look right. So this is an inch. Okay, this is, this is the candy. When I, when I talk about Hershey's Nuggets, see? Hershey's Nuggets, collection of delicious chocolates. I'll show you the bag later. I mean, I know that was really close up to the camera, but just so you know what we're decorating here. So click OK. Now, we could keep adding shapes. We could click, you know, we could click OK. We could add shapes and all this business. And that would take a long time. Or we can go like this. We can select the shape and we can, we can go to this edit, right? We select it and go to edit. We want five of them. So that's good. Now, we could sit there and do all this business and try to move it all around and get it to fit where we want it. Or I want to teach you a concept about something called the cutting area and the auto layout. 
Every time I teach this tutorial, there are new tips and tricks. This is probably the fifth time. I've been making these for more than five years, but I think this is the fifth or sixth time I've shown this, I, that I feature the new ink colors on YouTube. And each time we do a little bit different tricks. So what I want you to do is when you go into your settings, right, there's something called the cut area. This cut area is the area that the all of the work is going to be done in. And even though I could place items manually over on the right side, it's better to tell the machine what area to put things in. And so you're going to, if you go into your cut area and you just kind of surround this little area over here. Now, don't go right under the six. Just go a little bit bigger because it really, you need a little bit of margin here like because nothing ever cuts out to the edge. So just kind of make it around the top right corner. Or if you want to do top left, you know, bottom left corner, it doesn't matter. So that's okay. Now, what we want to do then is when we want to use something called the auto layout. So when we click OK and we use this button called auto layout and you have it in the other machine too. It's the one with the little shapes, the triangle right side up, upside down, right side up. It's when you're about to go cut your something. You'll see this auto layout. Sometimes you'll see the icon that looks like this. And this, this icon is the auto layout that lets it go any which way. So let me grab a shape to show you an example. I want these shapes to auto lay out within my cutting area. So if I use the first option, it'll go any which way it needs to, as long as it fits in that area. If I use the second option, it's going to go only right side up and upside down. That's what the triangles represent. And if the third option, it's going to do an auto layout, but everything's going to be facing the right side the same way up. So we want to use the one where let it do, oops, let it do its thing. I meant to do that. See how it did that? Let it do its thing. So I love that. Okay, now what we can do is we can like we can we can modify it some if we want. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm 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 kinda liking it. You know, maybe I don't know. I might I might not have done it that way, but you know, I'm just gonna see what it does if I do it again. Let's see. Maybe I need to make my um let me, let me see if I make my cut area just a little smaller, if it does a little bit better job, because I like the way it did it earlier. And for some reason, it's just wasting a little more space. And I can actually go back to use the one that I already have anyway. Yeah, that's the way I want it. See how that is? Now it's wasting less space. All right, so good. Yay for cut area. I mean, um, yay for auto layout. So now what I want to do is I want to make these all into a group. So we're going to, you know, just let's see. Edit, we're going to go over to this little guy, you know, back into the edit, and we're going to select them all. Use this one here, select all, and select them all, right? And then we're going to group them. This is the button called for grouping. All right, so if you missed my tutorial the other day, oh, I love it. Now I have a group. Why is this important? Well, we're going to use that group concept in a minute. I'm going to show you why that's important. All right, so anyway, let's click OK. And uh, let's just, let's cut, let's cut and then talk about why this is important and why we can like duplicate that group and change our cutting area. So what I'm doing is I'm loading the mat. Okay, and let's talk about the settings. These are so easy. These are rectangles. I'm going to turn my blade up to 12 and back to number three because I'm using designer series paper. If you have an auto blade, if you're using an SDX machine, it says SDX up here. You do not need to set the blade depth. Don't mess with the blade holder at all because you have an auto blade. You don't need to set the blade depth. I'm using a blade depth of three. Sorry for that glare on there. And I'm going to go and you can use your, you can other settings you can change are, I changed my pressure to seven. I don't know why I changed my pressure so high. I think it was set like that for my cardstock and that probably could just be default. So let's leave that one. But you definitely want to turn your speed higher. Okay, so for designer series paper, don't mess with the pressure unless you're using cardstock. But for the speed, definitely make it higher. Don't, I mean, the default, look at this, is number three. Hike it up there. It's the highest it'll go on this machine. So I'm going to go with the speed of five because let's get this cutting, right? And just hit start. We don't want to take all day. We're just cutting a bunch of rectangles, right? So that's why we can go faster. And you might notice that this machine is louder than the SDX machine, which is okay. So rock and roll, I cut a big big old pile of these earlier. And I'm going to show you the paper and the different patterns. So you can just keep on going. Now, I think this would be great for 
other things. And I have a little bowl of these. Let me just grab some. You know, like maybe maybe laying them out and um, making little stripes on your cards. Like these are some of my templates I had earlier. There was different space between them, but you, you could see the template I have saved. I saved a little more paper with having this extra piece, but I just thought these were cute to save for, for this, you know, backgrounds. But now I'll make a bunch with this pattern. And then I'll have a bunch that have thinner lines between them, which is nice too. So that's that's cool. All right, so anyway, not, get these off your mat. Bend your mat a little bit. Actually, you don't really have to do much. They just come off your mat. Oh, beautiful. Now I'm going to show you different colors of paper and show you now how to change the area, cutting area back. So if you just joined in, you get some more tips and tricks. All right, so first of all, we have a template. So go ahead. You know, you, you probably want to save this. So go back and save this to your machine. I already have mine saved. And my prob my machine's probably out of space by now and all that stuff. But let's see if it lets me save it. It includes a group pattern, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. You can't ungroup it once you save it. That's fine. We want to save our pattern. So, you know, I do this. Yep, it's saved on my machine. So let me, let me teach you first how to get it back from your machine. Oh, no, we're about to delete all patterns. It's fine. It's fine. When you turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. The next day, meaning tomorrow, you come back and you're like, I want to cut Hershey Nugget treats. The two times per year that I do a massive Hershey Nugget treat projects are right now during a new catalog launch because I am a U.S. Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I like to feature my new colors to my customers and my crafty friends and my team and, you know, different people. I like to feature these colors and I do it for craft fair time. Always for craft fairs. This is a very hot selling craft fair item. I do have a course on making and selling crafts where I teach you how to make several crafts and then I teach you some selling tips. And I have a craft fair calculator included in that course. So if you're interested in that, go to the description in the link below and find my courses and things. All right, back to this. If you want to retrieve, you come back the next day and you want to retrieve this pattern, you're going to go into pattern and you're going to go to your save data. And then it's asking, where do you want to save your data from? Where do you want to retrieve it from? We just retrieved it right from the machine because that's where, and we just saved it to the machine. So we're going to retrieve it from the machine. You could also retrieve it from a USB stick or from the internet or from, I'm, I'm sorry, from your laptop. Okay. And if you want to retrieve it from the internet, there's another way to do that. And you'll see the little cloud at the beginning. All right. So now we're going to go to page 10. You could either scroll down like this to page 10, or you could just go backwards to page 10. If you're on page one, you can go up and on page 10, there are your nuggets. They're right there. So let me show you that again. When we, when we retrieve a file, let me just go back. If you were to retrieve it from the internet, it's right there. If you're retrieving it from the cloud, but we're retrieving it from the machine. So we're going to go to this one, retrieve it from the machine. You could either scroll down to page 10 like so, or if you're on page one, you can just jump up to page 10 by going backwards up that way. And that's how you retrieve your file. And then, you know, you can cut it again, rock and roll. But wouldn't it be better to cut this multiple times? The reason I set the cutting area was because I wanted to make sure that they, the layout was within this area. Okay, so now let me... Okay, let me show you what I mean. All right, so I'm going to show you why I did that just for a moment. It's already saved, so let me show you... Uh, one moment while we do this. Okay, let's get let's get this file. And we have, I'm going to go to the cutting area in here. And I'm going to go back to the 12 by 12. You know, the regular cutting area, which is what you want to do too. Now, if I were to take all of these shapes though, right? Or any shapes, like different shapes, and I was to lay them out, it would have laid them out all over the mat. And I wanted them to lay out within a grid pattern that fits on a 6 by 6 paper. So... That's why you want to do the layout while you have the six by six cutting area set up. If that didn't make sense, I'll go over it more in greater detail at the end of the tutorial. But now we're rocking and rolling. We have summer splash cut. Let's go ahead and cut a peach pie. Now, the, every, every year we come out with new in colors, new in color patterns. And they're so pretty, right? There's, there's double, there's, a, let's see, four of each, four sheets of each, and they're double sided. So that's the Shy Shamrock. Here's Petunia. Petunia Pop. No, Petunia Pop. And now we need a Pretty in Pink. Okay, we'll do a Pretty in Pink. We've already done one of those. Let's do one of these. Let's do one of these. 
Okay, so you see that there's four patterns. All four colors have four patterns. Striped. Well, you know what I mean. This this one is like a lighter pattern. All right, so we're going to stick these on here on your mat, and then you can cut off four at once. So the reason I did the layout was it was it was based on the layout for a six by six. Now, if you were just doing a twelve by twelve, it wouldn't really matter. I'm just giving a, I'm just doing a little bit of washi tape. Well, pretend this is washi tape. It's actually painter's tape. I don't have to pretend it's painter's tape. It is painter's tape. I mean, use painter's tape. Use low tack tape. Use tape that you can get off of this again. You know, otherwise it might. But the reason I usually don't cut a whole bunch at once, unless I'm standing right here to rub them around, is I just rather cut. I just cut one rock and roll, and I, you know, I just start decorating nuggets while it's cutting, and switch the paper out. But I'm showing you that you can cut many, many more and faster if you cut a bunch of these at once. All right, so there we go. So let me show you how to duplicate another tip and trick. Grab my stylus. So we, we now changed our cutting area. If I were, if I didn't change my cutting area, right, back to this, and I duplicated, it would have only still cut this one in the top right corner. So be sure to duplicate, I mean not duplicate, to change your cutting area back to 12 by 12. We're going to go into this edit, and we're going to make four of these, okay? And we could use auto layout, but the problem is with auto layout is it might just stick them, it won't stick them in the four corners. It'll give us a good start, though. So that's the auto layout, but, like, okay, we're, we're, I'm, I'm happy with that, except I'm moving them into the four corners. If not, they won't cut right. So move them as far as you can into the four corners, and then you have your little, your ones that'll cut. So it's doing that. I'm going to say hi to you guys while it's doing that. And, whoops, hold on, pause, 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 pause. Okay, this is why I need to give it a good rub while I'm doing that. This is why I only do usually one at a time because they do sometimes tend to. This is my sticky mat. <laughs> so imagine if it's not my sticky mat. I'm just going to load that back up and let's see. It's still set on three. Okay. I'm just going to start cutting again and like I maybe won't say hi until I get this started because I want to make sure that there's not any funky, funny business going on, right? There we go. I feel like I'm, I'm doing the Olympic sport curling where I try to get the ice to stay smooth, right? It's like when you're using your scan and cut, I have to keep rubbing my mat to get it to, to get the stuff not to fall off of it. And this is a kind of, this is a pretty, pretty new mat, but it still beats cutting it. And it, and it, you can't get any more accurate than this, you know, using your scan and cut. Right? So it beats using a trimmer. It's really fast. It's really easy. You do have to just watch. Oh, this good. You know, you have to watch that it doesn't move. All right. We're hearing about the price of nuggets in Canada. It's like, it looks like you got to go over the border to the U.S. Go to North Dakota if you're on that side. That's where my relatives are from. But if you're on this side, I mean, of course, you wouldn't go to North Dakota. But I'm saying, those of you that live near there, go buy Hershey Nuggets there. Drive across the border and buy yourself some candy. All right. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Christina. Thank you, Lisa. I'm glad. Well, we're going to show you a bunch of ephemera, Lisa, and other treat holders. You only got to see one. I'm going to show you a lot more. All right. Hello, Deborah from Australia. Hello, Phil. Tracy from North Carolina. T, oh, you got your mystery box today. I'm so happy for you. T is happy she got her, her happy mail. Hello, Lisa. Now, you see how loud that machine was. So if you miss me saying hi to you, that's because the machine was loud. All right. Hello, Deborah. Hello, Kathy from Omaha. Okay, it was blurry. I hope it's not blurry anymore. It might have been blurry. Okay, now I'm going to turn on my light because... I was just making sure you could see the settings. All right, let's, let's go to this. It says finish cutting, okay. And then we're gonna just unload the mat. All right, so we were gonna get, you know, these just pop, I mean, basically they pop right off, right? And it, you know, except there's a little bit of tape over there. That's, and then you could save these little templates. Hello, Kathy Fennel, hello, Melody Israel. Yeah, that's what your paper does too. I know, I wish, I wish they could just... Now, Cricut rocks the mats. 
I'll tell you, cricket doesn't have like the scanning capabilities. I mean, it has sort of like a, it has way better scoring capabilities. I mean, I've had several crickets too. And their mats just rock. And in the past, and I've even done this on my channel, I've actually shown you how to take a cricket mat and attach it to, okay, this little part didn't cut, but then in the scissors, attach it to the scan and cut mat. But I don't do that with the auto blade, right? I only do that with this, this one because then we can set the blade depth. I hope that makes sense. So I would never, because this is a, this is a mat, I can restick it with, I've actually redone in these with cricket mats, stuck my cricket mat onto this mat. And boy, it lasted like months and months. But the but you but with the auto blade, I never mess with it because the auto blade's trying to determine the depth of things. You know. So anyway, just these will fall right off your mat. All right, so we got all that. Now let's show you what to do with all this. So we have all these great pieces, and I'm going to go ahead and shut this. Oh, I think just a, a final a final thing to show you on the machine, and then I can move the machine way out of the way. A final thing to show you. I just gotta cover that so it doesn't get the glare here is that you can go ahead and save this whole template if you want. So go back here and just save the whole thing and just save it to your machine and you can overwrite your old template or it's telling me I don't have enough data, blah, blah, blah. I'll just delete some of my card bases here. Anyway, it's overwrite my old template. Yes, it means just go ahead and overwrite my template, meaning next time I turn on the machine, or sorry, not, I don't mean turn on the machine. Next time I go home, and I go to pattern and I go to save data and I go to my page, this final page, look with, look at that. They're all there, how easy is that? And just start cutting, click okay and cut and cut and then you're done and you never have to save again and year after year you can use these templates. All right, so I like to score, there is a way to score with the machine, but the scan and cut does perforated lines. And that's okay if you're making lots of boxes and stuff. I'm fine with that, but if you're gonna make these Hershey Nugget treats, I'd rather you use, I'd rather you just use your Simply Scored. Okay, let's make this, let's make this pink tray because it's already a little bit wonky. I'm gonna use the Pretty in Pink. I don't know what happened to like this little bit here, but I was gonna fix it with my scissors if I can find. My scissors. Or I'll just I'll just fix this little part. I just gotta get rid of this little nib off the end. It was two and a quarter. All right. So you have these trays, and you're gonna score at three eighths of an inch on both sides. Okay, one, two, three eighths of an inch. I'm using simply scored. You can score with your simply, you know, with your with your trimmer. I'm gonna use the small end. Okay, and then I'm also gonna do one, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna do one with the new beige that I've prepared over here. Uh, the new basic beige. I thought I prepared it. I did have it, here it is. This is our new color. Oh, let me get rid of all these papers. I plan on making a whole pack of these, like using a pack of paper. Here's, a, here's our new color called basic beige. I want to show you how better, how much better the cardstock holds up for a tray. One, two, three. But you know, people are going to eat the candy, and does it really matter? No. But do you want to fe feature one more color? Then use basic beige for your tray, and you can feature yet another color because there's a new color too. So, in addition to our five new colors this year, we have a basic we have a basic beige color. So you're going to get your bone folder, you're going to flip that around, and you're going to do this. Right? So when you score down, you have a valley, like you're scoring into paper, right? So I scored down into the paper. When you flip it over, you have a mountain. So it's like you just want to score it in the right, the right way. It's kind of like you're going, you're going with the, if you score down and then you just like flip it over, you're going where you loosen the fibers. Okay, now I just want to show you that. Like how these hold up. Now this one, this one ripped a little bit. You see what I mean? These hold up a lot better, the tray, when you use the cardstock, but it doesn't matter because it's candy and they're gonna rip it open anyway. All right, thank you, Melody, for reminding people to like the video. I have 21 likes and I appreciate that very much. All right, the question 
I always get asked is where do I get my bags? Now I'm still using, I have, I get them in, I get them from Amazon now, but I'm still using st some old stash from Stampin' Up. We used to sell two by 10 inch bags. Now we no longer sell those anymore. Oops, this seal plus sometimes. So you want to get the bags from my Amazon store. And I also get a tiny little bit of commission and I'm talking a few cents. So please use my links when you shop. It takes you like one extra second. Don't be lazy and not use my links. Use my links, go buy your bags. I mean, you can go search for bags yourself or you can find the exact bags I use that actually work that are on my store. All right, let's go ahead and cover some nuggets. So we have this little bag of, you know, Hershey nuggets with almonds. And they have three kinds, you know, there's like three, three styles. So you wanna just sort of mix and match. So this one is milk chocolate. The rest have nuts in them. So when you, color, when you cover these up, you wanna make sure you label them. And I'll show you how, how I do that as well. You wanna make sure you label them so that people know that there's nuts in there. Okay, so you're just gonna build them up and, oh, I just, look at that. I like that, I like that pattern so much, I already made one like that earlier. So just kind of mix and match. Let's see, well, this one we'll do, kind of lay these out, like maybe, okay, that'll be Petunia Pop. We'll put this one in the middle for the, and we'll put that one in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna do another one of these for the peach. Peach pie, we're gonna do this one for peach pie. because I like how that looks on the gold. And I like the little flower showing. All right, so we have peach pie, then we have petunia pop, and we'll use the striped side of the petunia pop, and we'll put that on a, a lighter nugget. See how I'm just kind of mixing up the styles of nuggets? And then this one's gonna go there. Okay, I'll put that, I'll put one like, something like that maybe. Okay, summer splash, we'll do Let's see, stripes, nope, I'll do something else. I will do this one. If it goes the other way, I would, do the, I would do the stripes if it goes the other way. Okay, here, I'm gonna do that one for the summer splash. And then this one, I need a different pattern. We don't wanna use dots, because there's dots there. Here, we'll use this pattern here. Okay. So that's how I do it. And I just do a whole bunch of once. I do it while I'm watching TV. And we'll just put them on here. Okay. Oops. Oops, where'd it go? Oh, maybe I forgot to attach it. I'm like, where's my summer splash? I forgot to put the wrapper on. So that way you have this cute, so now you're showcasing, right? The idea here is you're showcasing the nuggets, you're showcasing the colors. If you're, you know, and I say, it doesn't matter if you're a demonstrator, a customer, like somebody who likes to craft or you're giving this to, you can give this out at your business, show appreciation to your, any other kind of customers. Like if you're a crafter, you can make these and give these out. And either way, like, of course I sell paper, so I showcase paper, but you can still showcase colors without selling paper, right? Like you could still make things look nice. Like, you don't need to be a demonstrator to do this project. Anybody should make this project. Like I said, they, they're great for craft fairs. Maybe you have a spring craft fair. Okay, so if that one's going here, the bottom, right? I have the stripes going different ways, then I need a petunia. Let's see what I need. I need a petunia pop. Next, we'll do this one. I like putting the petunia pop on the silver because... The petunia pops a dark color and it looks good on the silver. And then this one looks, oops, a little bit of, see how it's popping up? If it's popping up, I didn't put enough adhesive, so get that to go down. And you can always just use a glue dot as well. All righty, let's see what's next, that one. It seems like I keep using that same one. It's like I'm drawn to this pattern. All right, we need a pop. We need a, no, we need a, this one, the pink. I'm going to I'm going to go with the polka dotted side because it's not going to it's not going to be next to, it's going to no it's going to be next to that again. Can't do the polka dotted side. Well, I can, but then I have to do something different for the green one. 
I don't want to put polka dots next to each other, see? But that color comes next. All right, so that will be the other side. We'll use that side of the shy shamrock. And now we'll use one of the gold ones. See, I'm alternating. I just wanted to show you I'm alternating the nuggets and I'm alternating the colors and I'm putting the colors in their order. And now they're in their tray. And now we're gonna put them in the bag like so with the shy shamrock side down. Now you can see that when you use cardstock like we did here, it holds up really well. It's like super heavy duty and super sturdy. When you use designer series paper, it's, it's a little floppy on the sides. But that's fine. I'm just saying it doesn't hold up as well. So you do have to cut down these bags when they're 10 inches. They're gonna be a little too long. So put the shy shamrock, or put the summer splash side down, summer splash down. All right, let's see. It's grabbing. I'm just uh, grabbing scissors here and cutting these down a little bit. So you do need to attach your, don't cut them down too much because you have to attach your, your topper. So I'm just make, I'm putting a little bit of adhesive in there and tucking in the sides. I just, I've just made like several thousand of these over the years. So I just figured out ways to make them faster. And if I don't tuck in the sides, I have to fight with them or I have to use extra paper and make, make the toppers wider. And then I have to fight to cover the, to cover up. And I don't want to have to fight to cover up the sides. So I just do it that way. All right, now get your topper, which is any of these and score it two and a half because it was five inches. Flip it over like so. All right, we'll do this one as well. I really like this pattern, so we'll use that on both of them. All right, score it two and a half, or, or don't score it two and a half, just fold it in half. I mean, don't worry about it because it's a perfect rectangle to look cute. Now, important is you're gonna put three rows of tape, your three ro rows. You're putting it on the edges so that the, the whole nugget treat stays closed. And you're putting it in the middle so that the bag attaches to something. So see how, that, how much adhesive I use? A lot. And it does rip when people open it up. I know sometimes people re-gift these, but a lot of times people say, that was really hard to open. And that's okay. Because it was for them and I want them to like open it. It's okay. Just like it's only paper, guys. It is hard to open, but it looks nice. Look at that. It's super, super heavy duty. You don't have a floppy top. I used to do this and my tops flopped. Now that doesn't sound right. That sounds funny, right? My tops flopped, but you know what I mean? My, they were like, they weren't sturdy and like sticking up. They were like flopping over and my tags weren't standing straight up and it, it didn't look as professional. And now I have it down to a science where I get, I go like this and I top, you know, I put it real close up to there like that with those three rows of adhesive. And when I seal it, I push against the sides and it stays up really, it's, sturdy. it's just so sturdy, right? It just, it doesn't flop and you can use these. I've, I've heard people like put the tags. I don't usually do it, but they put a hole in it with the cute little ribbons and hang them up. Okay, so let's say we have, you know, speaking of ribbon, we'll just show you what that would look like. We'll put a little piece of in color ribbon on there. I'm just giving you a couple decorating ideas. Okay, so we'll put, let's put this one on here. We'll put that on there, like so. This is some things I've done in the past. I'm just doing some repeat things. Now, after it's like that, because I can never figure out which way to cut it when, until it's like that, then I, then I cut the edges. I cut the little bit. I just do that. I just let it sit there like that. I'm going to still decorate it some more. And then I cut the little edges, the little, the little edges because otherwise I never really remember where to, like how far down to cut them. Okay. Now let's get out the ephemera. So fun, I'll show you what these packages look like, but let's just sort of decorate these before I show you the other ones. All right, so buckets of ephemera is, these are, here's Petunia Pop. These are little, things that came in four different packets. And I'll, oh, I did want to use the ice cream cone. 
I think the ice cream cone will look cute. Okay, different, different color skin. Now, some of the ink colors are in the ephemera and some are not. And some of my wrappers are in there. All right, let's just find it. I'm just finding a couple flowers and sprigs. And then we're going to use the ones for the words. That's some more ephemera. So these are just new things that's, that Stampin' Up! is trying to appeal to, you know, different kinds of crafters, which is great. Let's see. I'm going to see what that'll do. Here for you. Best days ahead. Let's see. There's some... Some more words back here. Let's see where the other words are. I used the hello already on the other one. That's not the, that's not the same color that's gonna work. But the hello is definitely a one that would work on this one because it's, it's the right color scheme for this project. So, you know, even though the ephemera has lots of colors in it, you still wanna use colors that will go with your project. So we'll use a little hello on this one and put a little flower there. And this one I'm just going to attach right to the bottom. Anyway, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I just kind of grab the ephemera and see which colors sort of go well. And then I just um, stick them on there. Meaning I didn't have a... I mean, I know what I'm doing, but I mean, I'm mean, i saying I had no plan. Like, I'm winging it. Ephemera is just like, look at stuff, see if it looks right, add some Winkostella, and go for it. I mean, it's... And then you can add some... Some little bling, some rhinestones. Just add, add things that you think match is all. That's, that's the only rule. Make, make it match. All right, let's see. This one says it has an ice cream. So let's see. Ice cream. Yeehaw. Grateful would be cute. Heck yeah. Here we go. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, we want to eat ice cream. Now, sometimes when you take out the ephemera, there's these little nibs on them. And to make, they are like cardstock, but you still want to get off the nibs. Makes them look a little more professional, I think. You can also use a nail file to get those off. Okay. So, as you can see, I don't just use my scan and cut to craft with. Like, I use the right tool for the job, which is pretty much everything. Just use a bunch of stuff. You need, you can stamp your, you can stamp, you can use your ephemera. I mean, use what you got. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's see what else we have in these, these ones. I got the ice cream already. Okay, the heart. The heart will look cute, and it also matches. Oh, I got both hearts. And then let's grab some blends, see if any of those will match here. I have some new blends. Trying to think of what I did with my brand new blends. All right, let's see. I think this color, I'm just going to color this in with the little peach here. See how that will look. I don't even know if these are going to blend. I mean, I don't know what kind of paper it is. This is, this is the light one. I'm not doing the whole two-color blend thing. I'm just, I'm just coloring in my heart. All right? And then sticking, because I, I just think it would be nicer colored in. Okay? And then we'll put the ice cream there. These are the new ink colors, by the way. You're going to see my list of ink colors as I throw my stickers on here. So that's it. That's how you do it. This is how we do it. And it could, this one could have used a ribbon as well, if you want. And then you add some rhinestones, if you want. 
Wink of Stella. Always Wink of Stella. This is back in stock as of a couple days ago. Who knows how long it will be in stock, so if you like this Wink of Stella, then get some. I just got myself two more because I use probably like one a week, as much as I... All right, it makes things sparkle. And then the last finishing touches are these stickers. If you want to know how to make your own labels, I have a label making course. But you can also just use like your templates and Avery. These are Avery labels, meaning Avery has templates online and you can go to Avery and set up your labels online and download the templates that way. I just use Google Docs. So there we go. I'm going to turn it like that. The reason I put labels on them is because they do contain nuts, and especially when I'm selling them, I want to make sure people know that there's almonds in these. And when I'm just giving them to customers, I want them to know what colors are in the, in colors that are featured there. So that's why I do the labels. Now I want to show you, now that the tutorial is done, I want to show you ephemera packs, what they look like, and my other Hershey Nugget treats. See if there are any questions or comments and show you these colors. All right, so we have, these are kind, these are the ephemera that's already like pulled out of the packages. There are, I grabbed some new ones just to show you. Let me see if I have those. I thought I grabbed new ones to show you. It's funny when you don't even go anywhere and like you lose things. Where did everything go? Okay, so the, the types of ephemera packages are, this one is called Say Something Ephemera Pack. All of these products I'm showing you are pre-orders. So if you want to join Stampin' Up, you can get them now. Otherwise, you wait until May 1st and you can get them as my customer. Okay, saying something, not say something. Saying something, ephemera pack. Yes, you can create your own ephemera with the scan and cut, but it would not be this beautiful because this is already colored and cut out. It would be beautiful, but it wouldn't be this beautiful because all the colors and all the shapes and everything. But you can definitely, I would create the sprigs and the, and the layers and things with your scan and cut. You can also create extra layers for these. Scan these in and create extra borders and layers for these. This one's called Fully Flowering Ephemera Pack. Fully Flowering Ephemera Pack. And this one is called Labels and Layers Ephemera Pack. Okay. So that's what I wanted to show you. And then this, a lot of them use the ink colors. I poured them into the here and I have, this is the flowering ones. And this is the label ones. So this, and there's a couple others mixed in. And this one, not not these labels, not these ones, but these ones, the, the ones called saying something have two pages like this, but I didn't turn them into stickers. And then these I turned into stickers with my sticker machine, right? I turned these into stickers because these I feel like need to be stickers because I don't want to have to use fine tip glue pen. So they all come in the say something, saying something package, okay? Learn more about my sticker machines on my Amazon store. But then this one's my favorite package. Something for everything ephemera package. Look at this one. I've opened it up. Oh my goodness, how cute are these things? The little doggy with the hat and all this stuff. So yeah, this is all fun stuff. So I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of some projects. I'll keep making stuff with the ephemera and show you. All right, so now I'll show you the rest of my nugget treats. I made three more. Here's one with the little flower pot. Here's one with the You Make Life So Rosy. And here's one with the little cart with the little cupcakes. And then I took these, I took these markers, these little ink color markers, the fine tip side, and then I colored in the little butterfly, which is part of the ephemera. So yeah, colored in, look at, look at how cute it is when you color in the ephemera. Now you can, you can make your own ephemera with the scan and cut and you can draw with the scan and cut. However, if your time is valuable, then you just get packages of ephemera. I mean, because look at all the shading you would have to do and all the coloring and all the, the drawing. And, and by the time you use your card stock to do it, it, it would just be like behoove you to just save your time to do it. So this, this is what I have so far. Now, 
Last time we met here on my Scan and Cut tutorial a couple days ago, I told you I was working on my survival kits, which I have sent, since worked on here. Oops, something else. I want to show you what they look like now. I'm in the middle of finishing up all kinds of kits here. This is, my mom helped me package these up. So we have, just to give you a little context, you learned how to make these tags with your Scan and Cut. You learned how to make, there's my little bucket of them. Well, these, these, they're in here. Okay, here we go. You learned how to make these. I taught you how to make, these are last year's tags. Um, my color labels are available for my, at my digital download, all the color labels at Stampin' Up. Right, like this. So you go ahead and check out my, my store in the link below for my downloads of labels. Anywho, we showed you how to make these with your Scan and Cut. All these little shapes, and you can use it for whatever you want to make tags for. And I told you I was using them to make my survival kits. And I didn't have them done at the time, so now I'll show you what my customers are getting with their catalog. To request a catalog, use the link in the description of the video. I know I'm repeating myself, I say that a lot, but there's the little things we made. Okay, so the swatches are all labeled. I did this part, and my mom, boy, I put those ribbons on tight. I didn't realize how tight my ribbons were <laughs> until just now, but they're all like that. They're pretty tight. And some are splash. So these are the colors. I like how well they go together. I was featuring the ribbons. I was naming the colors. I was giving you a sample of the colors. So that's why it's part of my survival kit. Then we have a pen. Oh, here, the, it talks about the survival kit. So it says, sticky note to match your, to mark your favorite items. So. My mom actually put two colors of sticky notes in everybody's package. A wish list to keep track of your must-have items. There's your wish list. Oh, she made three colors of sticky notes in there. Okay, a pen, a pen, a pen, a pen. Here's a pen. Chocolate, we got your Snickers bar. And I had a little contest on my Facebook page for counting how many Snickers were in my bucket. And congratulations to Carrie for winning that challenge. Then we have a, so chocolate because everything goes even stamping is better with chocolate. Bandage for paper cuts while rapidly flipping through the pages. That's your Band-Aid. A tea bag to help you relax while you use this gorgeous book and search through the endless number of creative projects. Okay, and the new additions this year are, I give everybody a magnifying glass because this catalog is so tiny. And those of us that wear reading glasses, I mean, the front of it's not tiny. This is the new catalog. But look, this is... There's my website, right? This part's big, but you know what I mean? It's, it's going to help you with your catalog. So my business card is in there and the survival kit. So that's the survival kit, and you get that with your catalog. All right, well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed making these and playing with some ephemera, checking out some new colors, and all that fun stuff from Stampin' Up and your Scan and Cut and also just using your... <gasps> Deborah doesn't eat chocolate. What? Thank you, Outback Stamping. Leslie, nice to see you. Thank you, Christina, for being a channel member. Hello, Midge. Nice to see you. I see lots of you came in. Uh, thank you, Kathy, for your comment about the... About the... Uh, okay, buffering. Debbie, I hope you got it. I hope you're able to get this video in it, but it's not buffering anymore for you. But hello, Deborah. Thank you for being a channel member, a channel supporter. How is the paper quality on the ephemera packs? Lisa, to be honest with you, it's not great because, <laughs> Lisa, I keep it real. I'm one of those demonstrators that I don't sugarcoat anything. This is about the quality of your paper pumpkin kit. Okay? This mean, You know what I mean by paper pumpkin kit. That's these new cards. We sell these new cards as well. And the new cards are cool because you can use them with the ephemera pack. And we're appealing to beginning. we're now appealing to some beginning stampers now. You know, we have all these really cute little card packages. This is two of them, and I'm not sure which ones are which, so. But these are the quality of a paper pumpkin kit, which is fine. I mean, they're good. Good, but not great, right? So this, this is a whole different level. This is like twice as thick. Like th this here is our cardstock, which it's top of the line. You can't find better cardstock. I mean, I dare you, I challenge you to find better cardstock. I mean, th with color coordination, with ribbons, with embellishments, with, with ink that goes with it, with markers, with ink, I mean, with everything that goes with it. 
There are no better places to get these great color coordination. However, and our cardstock is top of the line quality, but these things are kind of, you know, flimsy compared to the cards. But it doesn't matter. Like, you're using them to decorate with and you're being creative with it. So, like, what's it matter, right? They're cheap, too. I mean, you get, I mean, it's like, you get, like, eight sheets. I mean, come on. I mean, who cares, right, if they're flimsy? I mean, just, they're so, you can be so creative with them. And the coordinating colors, like, look at this. This is going to match, right? Like, that's going to, or actually this one. I mean, the colors are going to coordinate perfectly with your projects and look really good and look really professional. So that's what's really fun about it. All right, well, I think that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. Have a great evening. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial.